This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good night, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for February 20, 2023. And in the news tonight, UWI appeals are for calm following protests are calling for removal of hall manager. The administration of the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies is appealing for calm among students of Mary Seacole Hall and the Chancellor Hall who are agitated over an incident on Sunday. The students protested Sunday night calling for the removal of the student services and development manager of Mary Seacole Hall, Dr. Nadine Spence. Campus Registrar Dr. Donovan Stanberry said that the allegations are that there was an altercation involving Dr. Spence and residents of Chancellor Hall during a sports day on Sunday. But I gather there was an altercation and um, that involved, I think, somebody externally came in. And um, I don't even want to repeat them until I verify what exactly happened. And so I'm relying heavily on the security report. Um, but suffice it to say, everything ended up in the students demonstrating um, for the removal of this chairperson from of um, the Mary Seacole Hall. But as I said, we have to do so on the basis of facts. I don't want to go by allegation by who said it. And what said, there's a lot in the media, there's a lot on social media. Um, but as a responsible administration, um, we have to get the facts and then we'll act accordingly. We ask our students just to, um, you don't need to protest to get action, although it is their right so to do. Um, but protest suggests that nobody's listening. I'm saying that we are listening. NIA suggests Integrity Commission could owe wholeness an apology. National Integrity Action has questioned whether the Director of Investigation at the Integrity Commission owes a Prime Minister Andrew Holness an apology following a ruling by its Director of Corruption Prosecution that no charges should be laid against him for alleged conflict of interest breaches. Professor Trevor Monroe, Principal Director of the NIA, said that the news stated that the Director of Investigation is obligated to issue a public statement regarding the exoneration of an accused person, where the Director of Corruption Prosecution finds that there is no basis for charges to be laid. Professor Monroe said that the question then arises whether there should be an apology from the Director of Investigation to the Prime Minister. There can be no explanation as to why you feel it's important to do an interview but not subject yourself to public questioning before the people of Jamaica. And that's what we have to insist on before rushing to judgment, and that's what NIA is calling for. So the law says that the commission must meet not less than six times per year. Now, on January 12th, you would have received this report. The public would wish to know Given the gravity and importance of those findings, how many times did the Commission meet between January 12th and February 14th in order to understand and, as it, as it said, to, to, to take time to do so? If the Commissioners didn't meet or only met once, this is a question that needs clarification, and there are many others as well. We commissioned a survey in 2019 and in 2021 regarding the level of public satisfaction with the performance of our integrity institutions, including the Integrity Commission. And we were so pleased to see that in 2019, the level of satisfaction of the Jamaican people in the Integrity Commission, which had just been established in 2017, a couple of years before, was 28%. But by 2021, this jumped to 40%. Sentencing postponed for cop convicted of 2010 murder at a football match. The sentencing of convicted lawman Alcourt Williams was postponed when he appeared in court today. Williams was convicted for the 2010 shooting at the Drugsall Sports Complex in which two people were shot, one fatally. Sentencing is now set for next Thursday, March 2. When the matter went to court on Monday morning, the defense attorney requested that the sentencing be set for another date. Prosecutors led evidence that the Corporal Williams was attending a football match when supporters of the two teams invaded the pitch, resulting in several fights. 
Corporal Williams reportedly intervened in a fight between several men, identifying himself as a police officer, and told the aggressor to drop the knife in his hand. The police claimed he opened fire in self-defense when the man advanced towards him with the knife. It was later discovered that the man and another patron were shot. One of the men succumbed to his wounds at hospital, while the other was treated and released. 16-year-old shot at friend's home in Westmoreland. A Westmoreland teen was shot and injured after accompanying his friend to his house at a farm district in the parish on Sunday afternoon. Reports are that the 16-year-old student was at a football field when he was approached by the male friend who invited him home. On arrival, the teen and his friend entered the house when the latter took a firearm from a chest of drawers. Police report that the friend allegedly then removed the magazine and thereafter pointed the firearm at the now-injured teen and shot him. The injured teen ran from the house and raised an alarm. He was subsequently rushed to the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital by residents, where he was treated and admitted for gunshot wounds to the region of his left knee. Investigations are ongoing. Tax offices to close early tomorrow. Tax offices island-wide will be closed early tomorrow afternoon. Tax Administration Jamaica says that the closure, which begins at 2 p.m. on February 21, is to facilitate a general staff meeting. The meeting will involve team members of all tax offices and the business locations on that day. Tax offices will remain closed on Wednesday for the public holiday. Normal operations will resume on Thursday. Municipal corporations to be allocated funds to truck water to drought hit areas. Municipal corporations should know today how much they will receive from the $50 million allocated for the trucking of water to communities worst affected by drought conditions. The government has said that the country is experiencing a meteorological drought due to the significant reduction in rainfall. Matthew Samuda, the minister with responsibility for water, says that the $50 million allocation to help alleviate the issue will not be evenly split, so areas are more severely affected by the drought will receive more funds. We've done a metric that, that compares um, population as well as using the standard precipitation index. So who has the worst drought yeah. will get... It's not widely varied, but there are population concerns as well as those who have been without water longest. For instance, because of additional road work in the area of eastern St. Thomas and eastern Portland, they need a little more assistance. Yeah. Clarendon has been as scorching with heat and with lack of rain, so they will need some assistance in both the northern and the southern belt. Suspect charged for trying to break into ABM. A suspect captured more than a week ago attempting to break into a National Commercial Bank automated banking machine in Westmoreland has been charged. Randina Allen was charged on the weekend with attempted robbery, shooting with intent, and illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. A second suspect in the matter was fatally shot during a reported confrontation with the police. The police say on February 11, about 3 a.m., they were alerted to men seen breaking into the ABM in Little London, Westmoreland. On the arrival of the lawmen, the would-be robbers reportedly opened fire. One of the robbers was killed and Allen captured. An illegal gun was seized. In recent weeks, armed thugs have been targeting ABMs across the island. A machine was stolen in St. Elizabeth two weeks ago and $8 million removed by the robbers. The Jamaica Bankers Association issued a statement recently raising concern about the spike in attacks on ABMs. The association warned that a recent escalation in ABM vandalism and the theft could lead to customer inconvenience as the member financial institutions prepare to take a number of steps to mitigate losses. According to the Bankers Association, banks are looking at a number of options to minimize the losses, including a reduction of the cash available at ABMs and the removal of the machines altogether from high-risk locations. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.